Hey everybody, it's John Gibson. Well, maybe you uh, heard about this and forgot it. Maybe you never heard about it, but uh, the uh, conservative senator from Oklahoma named Tom Coburn is uh, is retiring, and uh, there's going to be a, a free for all in Oklahoma to to fill that Senate seat. Uh, coming up uh, pretty soon is a primary uh, for Republicans. And uh, there's a, a, a guy named T.W. Shannon, who is the Speaker of the Oklahoma House, uh, used to work for J.C. Watts, and uh, he got the endorsement of Sarah Palin the other day. Uh, she wrote on her Facebook page, uh, Tom Coburn leaves large conservative shoes to fill as he retires from the U.S. Senate. At six feet five inches tall, T.W. Shannon is the leader to fill him. T.W. is the underdog in this race, but that's not a position he's unfamiliar with. He's had to beat the odds all his life. He became the first Republican to ever win his district seat in the Oklahoma State Legislature, even though the naysayers said it couldn't be done. So we you know, saw this and thought, who is T.W. Shannon? And Christine tracked him down. T.W. Shannon joins us now. Mr. Shannon, welcome to the program. Hey, John. Thank you for having me. Well, uh, so it, it, uh, Sarah Palin says you're an underdog in the race. Have you closed the gap a little bit? I think we have, John. We've been at this just about a month now, and I will tell you, we were able to go up on the air, broadcast television and cable statewide after about two weeks because we were exceeding our fundraising goals. There's now a super PAC that's weighed in uh, that is advocating on our behalf. And I will tell you, people are responding, but Governor Palin's endorsement, I think, makes a, makes a difference, and it makes a difference in the race. You know, she also endorsed uh, a few cycles ago Ted Cruz, and, you know, he was the underdog at that point, and we saw what happened there. So I'm excited about the governor's endorsement. I met her last year. We both spoke at CPAC, and uh, I didn't waste any time asking for her endorsement. And I'm just honored she would extend her credibility on to me. So, uh, look, uh, if if you were to uh, wind up in the U.S. Senate in, in the seat now occupied by Tom Coburn, what what is your approach to uh, sorting out this fight that's going on between uh, Republicans back there? Well, the, the fight is that that fight that's happening nationally. It's not any different than what we had to deal with while I was Speaker of the House, but we were still able to, you know, stick to our conservative principles. We 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 lowered taxes. We we reformed our workers' compensation system. We pushed back against the federal government and federal intrusion, and it, it just required leadership, John. That's what that's what the issue is. You need leaders who can bring people together and get things done for the American people. And those things that need to get done are number one. Reducing our debt. I mean, you know, stop increasing the debt on the backs of taxpayers. And number two, reduce the spending. Those are the two issues that are driving this campaign. I'm concerned that if we don't do something now, my kids and grandkids won't have a country. Well, um, what do you think? There's any chance that uh, that before Republicans actually take back the White House, that they can somehow get Obamacare repealed? I, I'll, I'm always optimistic. I think, you know, if, if Republicans would unite and come together and stay strong, I think we can get it done. And it's, I think it's, it's, it's tantamount that we do. I mean, we see, we hear about people losing their health care every single day. I think it's a, it's a major issue, just like I think the debt is a major issue. I think it's a moral crisis. crisis. I think it's a, a threat to our national security that one out of three dollars that the federal government is spending is borrowed money from China. Uh, it scares me to death, and we need fiscal concern conservatives to come together and say no to the liberal agenda of Barack Obama. We do it in Oklahoma. We balance our budget at the state level while I was speaker. We do it on our personal incomes, uh, our household uh, budgets. When, when things are tough, we, put, we tighten our belt straps and we focus on the priorities. That's what the federal government needs to do. If you get back there, uh, are you going to side with Senator Rand Paul or Senator Ted Cruz? Well, listen, I, I don't need, know either one of them personally. I'm going to be a leader, uh, uh, you know, much like Dr. Coburn was, uh, somebody who called a spade a spade, and it didn't matter who it was. Uh, you know, right is still right, and wrong is still wrong, and it's that simple. If you stand on your moral convictions, uh, I'm going to be standing with anybody who agrees with me that our debt is a priority. We need to lower it. We need to get it under control, and we need to stop the out-of-control spending. I'm going to be on the side with anybody who's agreeing with me on those issues. It's about well, leadership. Well, what, but what about this What about this sort of internecine war among the Republicans? I mean, you got 
got McConnell saying he's going to crush the Tea Party. You got you got Cruz and those guys attacking the Republican leadership, thinking they're squishes or wussy or too willing to go along with big government things. I mean, what are you going to do in the middle of that fight? Well, I, I think be a leader. I'm going to do exactly what we did while I was Speaker of the Oklahoma House. Not only did we fight to lower taxes, not only did we, you know, fight to say no to more debt. We actually reduced our debt while I was Speaker by about a hundred million dollars. Uh, we we did it by standing on conservative principles, and it's about leadership, John. If you if you can bring people together uh, and be a leader and show them that you're resolute in what you believe, I think people will line up behind you and support. Where are you on this uh, immigration problem? Well, I think immigration right now, frankly, uh, it, I think it's a national security issue. We need to secure the borders, and we need to say no to amnesty. Yeah, well, uh, okay, uh, you got a lot of illegal uh, illegals in Oklahoma doing farm work. Uh, you want to see them legalized so they can work and drive and have car insurance? Well, I think the first step is we've got to secure the borders. We need to know who's in this country. We don't even know who those who those illegals are right now. The problem is you've got to stop the bleeding first. That's the first thing you got to focus on is securing our borders. It's a matter of national security. I mean, what country in the world doesn't know who's coming in and out of it? We need to figure that out and figure out right away and identify who those people are. There's no question. So if you ended up on uh, one of those uh, Senate committees, let's say you got on the Foreign Affairs Committee, uh, uh, just just pick one, uh, what would you be saying to the administration about what they should be doing about Vladimir Putin right now? Well, we, we need we need to be strong. You know, our big challenge now because of this administration is is it, it's simple. Our, our friends don't trust us, and our allies no longer fear us. Uh, we need to be strong, we need to be resolute, and we also need to make sure, first and foremost, that we're supporting our allies like the nation of Israel. It is a strategic partnership for us to support the nation of Israel. Uh, we've wavered on that. We've been, um, you know, this administration has, has indicated, you know, two different scenarios of how they might or might not support Israel. And I think we need to be strong and support our friends. If, if things go bad in the world, uh, there aren't a whole lot of countries we can count on to be with us. Israel is one, and we need to make sure that we're supporting her. Uh, you know, what we gather from intelligence there, the things that we do uh, in Israel to um, uh, advance, you know, the, the fight on terrorism, uh, they've been our greatest friend and ally, and we need to be focused on supporting our friends. But, you know, as far as Vladimir Putin is concerned, the challenge with this administration, we keep showing up after something bad has happened. The world is a safer place when America is strong, and that's why we should be supporting our military and not cutting spending in military. You know, uh, you worked for J.C. Watts, didn't you? I did. He's a great friend and mentor. I was actually in his office yesterday. Well, what would you learn from him? Uh, I learned that character is, is what it's all about. People are hungry for leaders that have character, and character is simple. J.C.'s definition was it's simply doing what's right when nobody's watching, and that's the type of leader I hope to be. Uh, but J.C. was also the great communicator. You know, the thing about J.C. is because he was such a man of character, people saw that. It's not that he was just a great speaker, and he was, much like Ronald Reagan. The reason they're great speakers is because people can feel their conviction. They know that, that they believe what they're saying, and there's a connection there that they have with people. And so um, I learned a lot from J.C., but if, above all else, I learned that character is what really matters. Is the Tea Party a problem in this country, in, the, in, in Washington? The Tea Party has been an absolute blessing to this country. Uh, and, and, and the Tea Party, you know, was formed, and the Tea Party is strong because people are tired of Washington, D.C., and, and the political class dictating what should be done in growing government and not reducing the debt. If if Washington thinks the Tea Party is a problem, Washington needs to fix itself and they won't they won't have a Tea Party problem. But as long as people that are elected to represent the people aren't representing the values that they sent them there to do, there's always going to be an outcry. And so uh, Washington is responsible for the Tea Party because they've been unwilling to listen. And the great thing about being an American is that we can express our First Amendment rights. And uh, as somebody 
who, who sees the world as a place where we need less government, lower taxes. I'm strongly pro-life, and I think we should be supporting our friends like the nation of Israel. Uh, I think the Tea Party has done a great service to this country in making the politicians in D.C. wake up and recognize who's really in charge. We are citizens of this, of this country. We are not servants or subjects. As an African American, do you sometimes suspect that there's an element of racism and criticism of the first black president? Um, yeah, well, I, I suspect there's always, you know, some element out there, but I'll tell you what, there's enough to criticize this president about, about his policies and not, uh, his race. I mean, when you look at what he's done to grow the national debt and how Congress has continued to vote with him to raise the debt limit, uh, it scares me to death. So the fact that people are critical of the president, that's a, that, you know, that's, that's truly patriotic. Uh, people are always critical of their elected leaders. I'm, I'm an elected leader. There's an old saying, we all know there are people that hate us, but only politicians get an accurate count. Uh, and so the fact that people are suspect of this big government that keeps growing, I think it's patriotic. But I will tell you, myself, I've experienced, um, you know, a, a great level of discrimination in my life, but most of it has come from being a conservative. Uh, the liberal media continues to discriminate against, you look at Governor Palin and what she's had to go through as a, as a smart, capable woman who's a conservative. She's been vilified by the mainstream and media. And that's why I think she's such a, a terrific hero for the conservative movement because when she stands up there as a smart, capable, attractive mother, who's also been an executive and says we need less government and we need politicians on both sides of the aisle to reduce the spending and reduce the debt. I think she's been, you know, a great symbol for our party. Do you, uh, have you, have you gotten uh, attacked uh, since her endorsement because of her endorsement? The, the response has been overwhelmingly positive. You know, I, I met with her staff and requested her endorsement uh, because I think she and I believe a lot alike that, you know, people don't need the addiction to government in order to be successful. You know, we know that prosperity comes. Conservative values are what lead to prosperity, and that's what we should be espousing. So I'm sure there are, um, you know, liberals out there. I read some of the social media and, you know, some of the, um, you know, hate mongers that, you know, always hate to beat up on conservatives are certainly being critical. But the vast majority of Oklahomans that have, you know, reached out to me, they were excited. Some of them said, I hadn't paid close attention. Uh, I now know who the true conservative is in this race. So it has been very helpful to me. And you look at her track record, uh, Governor Palin's track record of helping to elect underdogs like myself who are fighting against the Washington, D.C. establishment machine. Uh, sometimes she, she she's made the difference uh, as much as anybody in any race, and I'm honored to have her support. I really am. And from a personal level, I really am. As a minority, um, I, I understand the challenges that she's faced as a woman uh, and the discrimination she's faced from the liberal media. And so I'm excited to have her an endorsement, and, uh, but i still got to go out there and tell people our story, and we're doing that every day, and we're getting a great response. Is Coburn going to make an uh, endorsement? Uh, he said he's going to stay out of the race. That's what he told me. I've certainly been asking him for it, but he's got friends on both sides of the aisle, and Dr. Coburn says that he's going to allow the, the Oklahoma voters to decide this election. And I think what they're going to decide is we need a candidate that can go to Washington, D.C., say no to Barack Obama, say no to the out-of-control spending, and say more to the say no to more debt. Uh, that's what it's about, and somebody who's going to go and advocate for conservative principles that are going to lead to prosperity. So I'm excited to be that candidate. Uh, and, you know, we're you know, on our website, twshannon.com, that we've gotten terrific response from people across the country that are investing and excited about our campaign. And so we're telling our story about less government, and people are excited. At 6'5", will you be the tallest U.S. senator? <laughs> I don't know. I haven't sized up everyone else, but I, you know what I think is really important, John, is people care about the character, the content of your character. And I think people will find me to be a person of faith uh, who believes strongly in the Second Amendment and uh, believes that you know marriage should be between one man and one woman, uh, and that you know government is not the answer to everybody's problem. That's why we passed welfare reform while I was Speaker of the House, requiring a work requirement. And um, when people hear the message about conservative principles. They respond because they know the liberal agenda hasn't worked. We've tried it their way. Now we need a new direction, and I hope to provide that leadership. 
T.W. Shannon, a uh, candidate in the uh, primary for the Republican nomination to fill the seat of Senator Tom Coburn. Uh, Mr. Shannon, it's good to talk to you. Thanks very much. We hope to talk to you again. John, it's my pleasure. Thank you, and look forward to following you on your show. Thank you. Well, you know, I'm just a, um, what am I, 10 miles south of the Oklahoma border. If you, if you, if you move the border a little bit, I'd be one of your constituents. <laughs> we may do that. Thank All right, you. man. Thanks a lot. Appreciate it race but that's not a position he's unfamiliar with he's had to beat the odds all his life he became the first republican to ever win his district seat in the oklahoma state legislature even though the naysayers said it couldn't be done so we you know saw this and thought who is tw shannon he got the endorsement of sarah palin the other day uh, she wrote on her facebook page uh, tom coburn leaves large conservative shoes to fill as he retires from the u.s senate at six feet five inches tall, T.W. Shannon is the leader to fill him. T.W. is the underdog in this, and Christine tracked him down. T.W. Shannon joins us now. Mr. Shannon, welcome to the program. Hey, John. Thank you for having me. Well, uh, so it, it, uh, Sarah Palin says you're an underdog in the race. Have you closed the gap a little bit? I think we have, John. We've been at this just about a month now, and I will tell you, we were able to go up on the air. Hey, everybody, it's John Gibson. Well, maybe you uh, heard about this and forgot it. Maybe you never heard about it. But uh, the uh, conservative senator from Oklahoma named Tom Coburn is uh, is retiring. And uh, there's going to be a, a free-for-all in Oklahoma to, to fill that Senate seat. Uh, coming up uh, pretty soon is a primary uh, for Republicans. And uh, there's a, a, a guy named T.W. Shannon, who is the Speaker of the Oklahoma House, uh, used to work for J.C. Watts, and uh, 